हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू जैकल एजुकेशनल चैनल सो दिस इज गेट इकोलॉजी एंड इवोल्यूशन प्रीवियस ईयर्स क्वेश्चन डिस्कशन व्हिच इज अ रैपिड रिवीजन पार्ट 17 इन आवर प्लेलिस्ट सो इफ यू हैवेंट चेक द प्लेलिस्ट यू कैन चेक द लिंक गिवन इन द आई बटन एज वेल एज इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो बिकॉज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मोस्ट फ्रीक्वेंटली आस्क्ड एंड इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फॉर द अपकमिंग गेट इकोलॉजी एंड इवोल्यूशन पेपर सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट स्टार्ट टूडेज वीडियो so guys before starting today's discussion i would like to remind you that get ready with your notebook so that you can write all these important points and concepts which will be helpful in your revision phase so let's read the question so this question is multiple select question all these questions will be multiple select question wherever it will be only single answer multiple choice question i will tell you so this question is the table shows the relative abundance of three potential prey species in the environment and in the diet of a bat predator so here first thing you should know we should know what the question is telling question is telling there is a bat so bat is the predator and it has three potential prey species in the environment and it shows the relative abundance that means how much of their abundance is there in environment percentage and how much is the diet abundance in the predator's diet So I'll tell you. Let's look into this table here, left hand side. So here, prey species names are given as X, Y, and Z. And in these two columns, in one it is given relative abundance in diet in percentage. That means that bat is preferring that species for how much percentage in its diet. So वो अपने diet में जो predator जो bat है, वो कितना प्रतिशत उस जो prey species को prefer करता है? next in the second column it is relative abundance in environment that means in the environment of that bat how much percentage of that species is present so it is clear so i will tell you one by one the x species the prey x is in the environment it is 40% present in the environment so in total of the all the three species 40% is the abundance or the presence of the prey species x but you can see here the relative abundance in diet that means the bat is not preferring the prey species x because it is zero percentage in its diet so no chance of that prey in the diet of the bat predator next is we will see that y species so here relative abundance in environment for the y species is 40% they are available in the environment of bat and 30% they are found in the diet of the predator so diet mein jo hai predator ke 30% jo hai y species hum ko milta hai next is 20% is the species relative abundance in environment for the z species and 70% it is found in the diet that is the relative abundance in the diet percentage of bat so this is the table i will clear all these things and we will now read the question and know what are the possible interpretation based on the given data so question is which one or more of the following is or are possible interpretation based on the data so i think you have noted down all these points which we are discussing now in the table so this is good for interpreting that so this thing is option a we will read first the first option says the predator shows a preference for prey species z so whether it is correct or not yes it is correct because we can see 20% is the only abundance of this species in the environment of that bat predator but 70% it is found in the diet that means 70% of the time that bat prefers this so the predator shows a preference for the prey species z it is absolutely correct second statement is the predator shows no preference for any of the three prey species so this is not correct because these two species are found in the diet of that predator so we can't say that it is not showing any preference for these three prey species coming to the next statement species x is avoided by the predator yes it is correct because we can see 40% the species x is found in the environment but in the diet of the predator it is 0% because it is not preferring the species x is avoided by the predator the last statement is the predator shows a preference for prey species y so we can see that this prey species y 40% is present in the environment but only 30% is present in the relative abundance in the diet of the predator that is the bat so it is also not correct 
so here only a and c statements will be correct so here simply by knowing the table very very simple thing even a school child can solve this question just we have to be focused and attentive and we have to analyze and interpret the table well so i hope you have learned this thing how to interpret the table this type of table if you have doubt you can ask me in the comment section let's move to the next question next question coming up on your screen so avoid this picture which is given first let us read the question and read all the options the question is which one or more of the following reason has or have been invoked to explain high species diversity in the tropics region so let's read each and every options carefully first is greater areas in the tropics yes it is one of the factors for the high species diversity in the tropics higher speciation rates in the tropic that means from one species more than one species are formed so this is also the reason next is lower extinction rates in the tropics it is also one of the factor for the high species diversity and the fourth statement is the tropics are closer to the sun so this is not correct statement to explain the high species diversity first of all this statement is absolutely wrong so as you can see in this picture the sunlight when it comes it falls mostly directly on the equatorial region so equator is closest to the sun as compared to the tropical region so this is not correct because tropical region are far from the sunlight so they are not the sun is not closer to the tropical region but to the equatorial region when the sunlight strikes most directly in that region so this is incorrect so as a result these three statements are correct so a b c will be the correct reasons for invoking to explain the high species diversity in the tropical region of our planet so let's move on to the next question i hope you have understood this well very simple concept so here comes our next question that is also a msq that is multiple select question more than one options can be correct let's read the question if the observed heterozygosity at a locus is 0.6 which one or more of the following could produce this outcome so here 0.6 is the heterozygosity and if you know that what is 0.5 0.5 when the heterozygosity is there that means a person or the organism has a 0.5 chance of passing one of its two alleles for a given gene that is 50 50 percent chance 0.6 is the case when that is not a pure heterozygosity so heterozygosity means one will be from one allele one will be from the different allele it is not homozygosity like hh or rr similar allele so this is this similar allele and 0.6 is the observed heterozygosity let's read these statements a neutral locus with three alleles so whether this is the outcome whether a locus under selection with two alleles whether this is the outcome or neutral locus with two alleles this is the outcome or locus under selection with one allele so here i will not take much of your time i will reveal the answer so here what will be the correct option the correct option will be actually two statements are correct here so one is option a the statement a is correct when a neutral locus is there but three alleles are present then this can be the outcome second is the b statement that is a locus under the selection with two alleles so if a locus is focused and it is having two alleles then there is the chance of this outcome but these two statements are not correct a neutral locus with two alleles will never give this heterozygosity value and a locus under selection with one allele will also not give this value so this is the thing if you don't know the concept also no need to worry you can ask me in the comment section for making a separate video but just to know that these two things are necessary to produce the heterozygosity of this value so let's move on to the next question here comes the next question yes next question is very interesting and based on the concept thing which one or more of the following reasons explains why whales use low frequency that is infrasound this thing you should note down whales use infrasound for mate finding to find their mate partner that is low frequency and high frequency they use that is ultrasound for hunting their prey so what is the possible reasons so here are the four statements let's read one by one whether because it is higher frequency transmit further without distortion than lower frequency whether it is higher frequency scatter more and allow for high resolution information or it is because low frequency transmit further without distortion than high frequencies or lower frequency scatter more and allow for high resolution information 
so here it is based on the common sense and basic concept also so here i will reveal the answer the answer will be these two statements are correct what does that mean that means high frequency if you are producing that means with the help of ultrasound they will scatter more scatter more means it will go in all the different directions and possibilities of finding the prey will be more so they want to find the prey which are nearby that's why they are scattering through the help of high frequency not low frequency so this is the thing first they need to find the food that's why they are scattering in the nearby place to find the food first then next thing is coming to the statement second that is low frequency transmit further without distortion than high frequency so low frequency what it will do is high wavelength will be there frequency low means high wavelength that means it will move more distance without distortion that means without any hindrance and it will reach its partner so it will take time it will go more distance but it will not have any distortion and it can find its suitable mate so that is used for finding the mate that is the low frequency that is having high wavelength and it can go longer distance so these are the two reasons why whales use low frequency that is infrasound for mate finding and high frequency that is ultrasound for hunting prey so let's move on to the next question question is coming up on your screen which one or more of the following genes marker genes or markers both are present is or are typically used for species identification yes this is also also this multiple select question and the options are 16s ribosomal rna cytochrome oxidase 1 igg and microsatellites so i'll wait for certain seconds then i will reveal the correct option so here two options will be correct for species identification first is 16s ribosomal rna and cytochrome oxidase 1 so this 16s ribosomal rna it is what it is a gene and cytochrome oxidase 1 it is what it is a protein so these two things are typically used for species identification but you should know what is igg this is not a very difficult thing it is immunoglobulin g which is an antibody so you should note down immunoglobulin g it is an antibody it is not used for species identification and then is the microsatellites microsatellites are the, these not microsatellites for satellites for remote sensing they are for linkage analysis so gene linkage analysis they are used that are microsatellite markers so these things you should note down next question is coming from the tree of life that means how the species are related to which species how they are closely related so that is called as the tree of life next is which one of the following statements is incorrect you should mark this thing where it is mentioned incorrect or correct don't get confused with respect to the tree of life so here different animal phylum have been given and you have to select which is the correct statement it is also multiple select question more than one options can be correct let's read one by one first statement is tenophora is more closely related to nidaria than it is to echinodermata so this is a correct statement so this thing you should note down this can come in the next exam also statement b is porifera phylum porifera is more closely related to tenophora than it is to echinodermata so you can take this as a trick that porifera and tenophora so they are closely related statement b is also correct it is not that much related to echinodermata next coming to the statement c it states arthropoda is more closely related to tardigrada than it is to annelida so here this statement is also correct so arthropoda the jointed appendages and annelida we all know the example best example is the earthworm next is statement d arthropoda is more closely related to mollusca than it is to nematoda this is absolutely wrong so this is only statement which is incorrect in this multiple select question one statement can be also incorrect you should not think that multiple select is there so you should be thinking about any other option one or more than one can be correct in this question so this question was asking which is incorrect so option d statement d is incorrect because arthropoda are more closely related to the nematoda than to the mollusca so here also rhyming comes into factor arthropoda nematoda they are close here porifera and tenophora are more close so the rhyming also can help you to remember this is a small trick thing 
and this is important to remember these things you should note down i hope you have noted down all these things in next video we will discuss more questions which were asked in the last examinations and are very important for the upcoming exam so if you enjoyed this don't forget to subscribe the channel to get all further updates see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself